Okay, so just before we move over to Maya, there's two things that we need to consider before we start blocking this shot out. One is the horizon line and two is the focal length. So what type of lens we should use uh, based on a scene like this. So the first thing we'll take a look at is the horizon line. And the horizon line in this image is around, let me just grab the line tool, is sort of around, let's go back to the line tool, <laughs> sort of around this level here. Yeah, sort of around the tabletop level. And that's where our eye level is in this shot. So that's one thing to consider when you're starting uh, uh, a shot working from a concept. So determine the horizon line because this affects how you set the camera up. The second thing is to sort of determine what type of lens would be used in a shot like this. So depending on how the concept artist put the image together, some concept artists will build the scene in 3D. I'm not actually sure how this was built. Uh, another artist will just do a painting. So they'll set up their vanishing points and do the painting. So what I'll do then is determine uh, what the focal length is based on a shot like this. So if I was to go out into the real world, then I'd probably be using a nice wide angle lens to capture as much of the environment as possible. So I'd go with something like a 24 millimeter lens in the end, I ended up going with a 28. You could do something like a 16, but just remember the wider uh, lens you use, it's going to start to look a bit eerie um, and you're going to get a lot of distortion. So I think 28 for me was sort of like a nice middle ground, but 24 would work nicely as well. So we've determined our horizon line. We've determined what focal length we need the lens to be. So we'll go to create camera and we'll set the focal length, so 28. We'll view from the camera and I'll call the camera render cam. I've also turned on shapes here, so make sure that box is ticked. And then once we're inside the render cam, I'm going to import our human figure. So I, this is called Test Tommy and he's from Houdini. So I'll load him in like so. You can see he's a hundred times smaller than he should be. So if you know what you can do as well to get the measurements right is you can take a box. I'm just gonna snap the pivot of this box to the bottom. So insert on the keyboard to bring up the pivot point V. So hold that down and move this to snap it to the edge of the geometry. Insert again to go back to the move tool or W and then hold down X and we're gonna snap this to the grid. So whenever you're snapping to the grid, hold down X. Whenever you're snapping uh, vertices or edges uh, to another object, for example, or you're snapping the pivot to the edge of a, an object, you hold down V. So once we've done this, we can say, well, the average sort of human being, I'm not sure what the height is, uh, but it's probably around 100 and, I don't know, 160 or 170 centimeters. So now you can see that Tommy is very, very small. So whenever we're importing models from Houdini, we need to times the size by 100. And I've also made sure that the pivot point on Tommy is snapped to the center of the grid. So we're scaling him from the very, very bottom. And then we can see that Tommy's a little bit taller than 170 centimeters. So let's delete that box. That's always a good way to make sure things are the correct uh, scale on your scene. Camera's looking very tiny. Let's turn up the locator scale. Turn that up to something like 35. We'll create a floor. And it's very important that we scale this uniformly and we don't move this up or down. The floor should remain at the origin, okay? We're gonna scale this up really super large, like really large. I'll probably do something like 25,000. And this way we know that the floor is going off into the horizon and we're going to be, it's going to be much easier to match up the horizon line. Okay. So we'll call this floor. Leave that as Tommy. Let's add our concept image in the camera so we can go into the camera. So I'm hitting spacebar, hold that down, go to panels, perspective, 
and render cam. I'm holding down, I'm holding down left click as I'm doing this. I'm going to create an image plane, and in the image name slot, we're going to load in our concept. <clears throat> Excuse me. What we can do now, whilst we're inside the camera, is just move this around. So we can also turn on wireframe on shaded, and I'm just going to move Tommy. We can also see that the image plane is tiny. So we need to increase the depth as sort of our building is going to be sitting around here and this image plane is going to get in the way. So what we can do is go to the image plane or you can access it via here, this tab as well. And we're just going to push this image plane back in Z, so in depth. And we can just push it back to something like 7,500 or something like that. We also have a clipping plane problem. So we're moving around in the perspective view now. We need to change the far clipping plane, so add a few zeros until nothing's getting clipped. Let's jump back into the render cam. And what we can do is just start scaling. So I'm just zooming, I'm basically zooming in in the viewport. And what that's doing is it's moving the camera in and out. So let's just move him back. I'm just going to middle mouse button and alt to drag. We'll also turn on x-ray so I can see what's happening here. I'm going to scale Tommy up. So, or I'm going to move the camera. I'm scaling in here. So I'm scaling out. So the camera's getting further away from Tommy, scaling in to get closer to Tommy. So we're doing all of this just with the camera. So I'm going to, I'm going to zoom out to the point where Tommy is sort of lined up with you know this table and I'm just getting the scale right so how large is Tommy compared to this table and I sort of measured my table and my thigh is sort of the tabletop came up to around the middle of my thigh so around I don't know something around that level there I think that's that's fine so now we now we know that Tommy is sort of the correct scale we have uh, the horizon line to fix now so let's just rotate the camera so moving this camera so we can see the horizon lines up here let's rotate that camera until we hit the horizon line that we talked about in Photoshop which is around there and what I'm going to show you now is if the if, when we're setting this up if the floor is too small so let's say this is 500 centimeters then it looks like the horizon line is not matched correctly and that's because we need to scale this until the floor goes off into the distance and then that way we know that that's hitting the horizon line and it doesn't matter how f far I go with this I could put this up to 50,000 it makes no difference so that's why we scale the floor very important we can just scale that floor back down now and we shouldn't adjust this don't be misled by the lines on the floor here. So where the pillar meets the floor, you'd sort of think, oh, let's let's move the camera and rotate it, you know, this way to match those lines up. So don't do that. And if you've moved the camera by accident, then you can hit the the back bracket on the keyboard to go back to the previous camera move and the bracket again on the right to move forward a camera move and so on. So Tommy's uh, looks like the correct scale compared to the table. The floors uh, matched up with the horizon line. And I think the next thing to do would be to, let's come out. We'll lock the camera now, very important. So lock that. We'll select in the channel box layer editor. We'll select all these. So shift, left click and select them. Right click and lock selected. So before we move on to uh, to working on this building on the left. I've just noticed that maybe Tommy's just a little bit too large there, so I'm just gonna scale, or I'm just gonna move the camera backwards just a little bit. Unlock that, and I'm just gonna move that into place just a bit better. Yeah, I think somewhere around there is fine. 
should just help with the camera and should set the camera in the correct position. So lock selected, come back out, see how far away the camera is there. That's looking a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to uh, scale that floor back up again. Scale it up pretty large so it doesn't confuse us. Keep going. Maybe up to like, I don't know, 25,000. Drop down a cube. Go to the front view. Snap the pivot point down. So I'm holding down, yeah, uh, press insert to access the pivot point, I'm holding down V to snap this to the edge of the uh, cube. Insert again, W to move back to the move tool, hold down X, and we'll snap that up to the grid. Okay, so what we want to do now is determine the distance between Tommy and the edge of the building here. So I'd say that's probably between, I don't know, 1.5 and 2 meters, something around that. So we'll say this box is, I don't know, 175 centimeters. Let's shift him, or this box, sort of over, and we'll put it where he starts, so the middle of him, and where the edge meets, so it's not far off. So I think it's actually, yeah, we could try 200. Yeah, so I think around 200 is fine. So let's move this cube all the way over to this side, where this building edges. And we're going to take a look at how far in front this building is in front of the, the table. And I don't think they're too far apart. I just think this building is a little bit ahead of Tommy, but not by too much. So something around there. I'm also basing this on the shadow on the floor. So we can see that the light angle or the shadow being casted is sort of coming at this direction. It's not straight. So let's lift him up until he's out of the uh, out of the frame. Take this to the side like that, and we'll just sort of make a box really. And I'm going to do this until the building sort of feels the correct scale compared to Tommy. And I think something around that feels about right. And again, it's a little bit of guesswork. So here we can add in some edge loops. So I'm clicking shift insert, uh, sorry, shift right click insert edge loop, option box, and make sure relative distance from edge is selected. We can rotate the cube. And a way to see this is by adding an edge loop down. So we'll add an edge loop where the window frame starts and also at the top. And you can see the lines don't line up with a concept image. So we need to rotate this building to somewhere around there. moving this into place until that lines up. So that's looking pretty good there. And this bit is probably the most difficult part, just getting these lines to line up properly. But I think overall that's that's looking pretty good. We've maintained that distance between Tommy and the building. Yeah, I think that's looking quite nice. I think that lines up quite well. And this is never gonna look perfect unless the concept artist built this from a sort of geometry in a scene and then did the painting over t over the top of the geometry. So underneath this building, there is sort of like, or well maybe not underneath it, but there's a section here where the building gets extended even further down. And that's because there's some steps just behind uh, this table here. So there's a drop and that also explains uh, sort of this canopy here 
looking like either it's further away or lower. So it's, it's further away just by a little bit, but not by too much. And it's dropped, so it's dropped down. And the floor is, is lower at the back than at the front here. So this is our uh, main building. Let's control D to duplicate that. And we'll call this main building bottom. Press control one to isolate that. Select all these edges. So I'm shift left clicking, selecting them. Shift right click, delete edge. And just make sure we've not selected that edge as well. So shift right click, delete edge. We're gonna take this face here Press Control one to go back. And I think what we'll do is move this down. So we'll move this down beyond the main building. We'll take this face and I'm gonna hold down V to snap this to the bottom of the building there. And then for now, we can just move this sort of up to around, let's take a look, back to the render cam. And we're gonna move it up to this line. I don't know whether you can see it. It's just where the sort of the sky is meeting the floor. So I don't think that's too far off. I'll, I'll press the space bar to go into this, these four views. Drop this down like that. In this view, we'll use the perspective. Here, oh, not sure what's happening there. There you go. And I'm just gonna lift this up until that lines up with sort of, yeah, around there. So where the sky is meeting the floor, it's very hard to see, but it is there. So this tells us then that we need to extrude the floor downwards at the back to this level here. And I'd say that the floor probably starts or the steps start around, I don't know, somewhere around here. So we can add that in. So let's scale this floor back down to the size or the limits of our scene, which is somewhere around there. And it's kind of difficult to gauge where this floor starts. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to add in the pillar wall first, so we can sort of determine what's happening here. And that will help us gauge how far back this is. Okay, so we'll take this box, duplicate it. This will be our pillar wall. Scale him down. Delete those edges. We don't need them. Drop those vertices all the way down. Make sure the pivot is at the bottom. Just gonna line this up with Tommy. So I'd say the pillar wall. Well, yeah, it sort of comes up to, you know, so just above his waist, I think. So around that level, I think it's fine. I'm sort of imagining him sort of leaning over it and it coming up just above his waist. Somewhat, something like that. And we also have to sort of determine the, the width of this pillar wall. I don't think it'd be too wide. It'd be something around maybe like that. It's fine. And also we need to determine the distance between the middle of the table and the pillar wall, which I think would be somewhere around, I think around here. So let's shift this forward to like there. And we wanna rotate this like this way, just move it outwards. Go back into the render cam and we'll try to line this up the best we can. So that's looking pretty good already. Let's go to both views. Back into the render cam here so we can see what's happening. Move it outwards, move it inwards and just try to line that up the best I can. So I think something around that. Just trying to figure out where this pillar wall would end as well. 
So this end sort of looks like it'd be further out this way. Just give us a little bit more space as we've got to fit this table in, remember. So we need that space. Kind of looks like maybe we drop that down just a touch just to match the concept and line that up. The perspective lines are lining up as well. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's pretty close. I think this is actually this line here is where the floor drops, so I don't think that's too far off. But again, it's a bit of a, a guessing game. So at this level, we'd have. I'm just going to move these. Actually, we can insert an edge loop. So somewhere around, I don't know, somewhere around there. We can take all of these faces here. Go from the top view. Take all those faces. Minus these. So I'm control double clicking to deselect. And then we're going, they're going to extrude. So shift right click extrude and drop that down to the exact level of the bottom of our building there. So I'm holding down V to snap that. We have this issue. So we're going to, oops, let's hit control one, go into face mode. Select these edges, so I'm double clicking. So click on the face, shift double click to the end, and it will select the loop. And hit delete on the keyboard once you're done with that. So that gives us that, which is looking kind of cool. It's lined up with the bottom of this building, so this edge here. And what happens then is that this gets sort of copied down to here. So we'll hold down V to snap. That goes to about there, so this level. And if we want to snap this box to this box here, we need to move the pivot. So holding down V, insert again. And now we can snap that face to that face there. We'll bring this in to around this level you can rotate this object here by 90 degrees and put him sort of around, I don't know, somewhere around this level here where the edge of the building would be. Yeah, I think somewhere around there. And then you can do sort of make your adjustments later. So that gives us that. I think that's looking pretty good. You kind of see here that this may even drop down a little bit more. So if I sh show you guys, so there, so we might need to make a slight adjustment to the, the floor here. So we could take all of these faces again. Oops, take all those faces drop it down. So I'm holding down V, snap it to the bottom of that pillar that we just adjusted. Would also need to do the same for this face here. I'm holding control one or pressing control one, control one again to go back out, hold down V, snap it. There you go. And now see our line is lining up and Looks like our perspective lines are lining up there nicely as well. So that's looking pretty cool. I quite like that. It's looking nice. I'm just going to hit save. Let's do the building in the foreground. Copy this building again, and this will be our building FG. Move it backwards, take the rotation off. So it's sort of parallel with the camera, move that in. And to do this, we're gonna to need to hit space R so we can see this. I'm also gonna turn on 
the resolution gate and let's take a look yeah yeah so the resolution gate and also the gate mask so with this we can't see what we're doing or where the handle is to move it so I'll use the slider here so just left click and slide we'll slide that out to the edge there and that's pretty much it and you can see this kind of works because the gap in between these buildings like kind of makes sense you know you can fit two people walking down that street it's a little bit on the claustrophobic side but i think it's i think it's fine you know that's also another question are these buildings uh sort of in line with each other because right now they're not so we could move this building back this way just so it's in line with this one Go back to the camera view and this tells us that we need to move this in Z to there. And that looks about right. Yeah, so I think that's looking kind of cool. I'm just looking back at the concept and saying, well, do you know what, if I was to get down on the floor and lie down, you know, would I be the distance across there? So we may need to adjust that, but I think that's that's looking pretty decent. Maybe just move it just a touch more, move it in a little bit more there. Yeah, I think that's that's looking a little bit better. I don't want to decrease that distance here too much. We we still want it to feel real. Let's add those wooden beams in. I'll scale this. Again, this is a bit of a difficult one to measure, but you could measure sort of a wooden beam, the scale of a wooden beam. You know, how big is it in relation to Tommy? Also, you know, how tall is this beam? Like how far away is it off the ground? So if Tommy was standing here, where would this beam be? You know, how much space would there be between the beam and the top of his head? So I'd say, you know, the Maybe if he was standing here, it would sort of be around this level, but again, that's guessing, so we can... Just putting the beam here. So I'd say there should be distance in between. You know, so if he's standing underneath it, he should be able to sort of jump up. You know, the way it feels, he should be able to jump up to catch that. So it should be sort of above his head. Nice bit of distance. And this is going to be an interesting one to see if this lines up here. So it looks like we need to... move this further out. And this is a little bit tricky, this might require you to move uh, some of the objects around and scene to get this looking right. Just going to zoom out a moment. So this is in the perspective view. This is in the render cam view. And this beam is sort of on the edge of the building, so we know that for sure. So. The beam is actually tilted downwards as well, I think. So it's kind of like that. Snap these points. So hold down V, snap it to the building. Here you go, if you'll let me, yep. We'll move these points inwards until you sort of reach here, this edge. take a little bit of that slant off actually it's a little bit too strong there let's beam up let's copy Tommy let's move him underneath see how he looks so he's standing right underneath there bit of space back in see how it looks it's not looking too bad and I seem to remember messing around with this quite a lot when I first approached it so 
if you pick up a concept and it does take you a little bit of time to sort of figure out the dimensions, don't worry about it. You know, it took me a little bit of a time. Okay, so again, snapping. If we want to snap this edge here or this face to this face here, then we need to move the pivot point. So V. But let me and sometimes it won't it will try to snap to other objects in the scene so I press control one at this point snap it again should work yeah there you go and control one again to go back out hold down V snap it nice grab these points snap to the floor grab these points snap to section here And it looks like there's not much sort of uh, distance here. So it kind of seems that this beam would be sort of right next to this pillar wall. This would be just comparing it with the scene, with the objects in the scene. It seems like it'd be a little bit further out. It kind of says to me, you know, maybe We'll change this to world. There. I think this should go up right up to around that point. Snap him. We've got a problem now that this building is sort of in the wrong place. So we can move him forward. We'll move it in Z. Let's move it outwards. I'm still not happy with this. I'm still not happy with the way this is lining up. I want to push this out. So all the movements are quite subtle and they seem huge. Um, so I don't think that's too far off. I think maybe it could be a little bit higher still. This building here, what I did was I sort of faked this. I didn't add all this detail in here. And it all depends on how much time you have. So let's add in another edge loop around there. If you need to move the edge loop, you can shift, right click, and go to insert edge, the middle mouse button. It's also a cool way to shift the edge. We can actually delete that edge again. We don't, we don't need that. Let's just move this all the way down, snap it. And this building sort of goes underneath it there. And then to sort of cheat uh, the lighting, you could add another building kind of like, I don't know, somewhere like, well, not another building, but you could fake the, the height of this building. You know, make sure this building's the same sort of scale. So that would act as like a light blocker So I think that's looking pretty cool. This isn't lining up here, but that's fine. Let's go back out. Just trying to see where this would be. We've got an awful lot of space there, but it's looking pretty good at this angle. Just seems like it'd be wider to me. And I like this pole to be quite close to the the pillar. This pole would also be kind of thicker. So if we move this into place for now, then thicken it out, and then we can just move it back. It's actually quite interesting that it looks like it's there. Thicken them out. 
and move him back. You can add these points in as well, so you could duplicate. Shift this around to minus nicely. And get these ones lining up. Move the pivot point. So insert on the keyboard, move the pivot point down. If it'll let me do it. So oh it doesn't like that. Just take that out a second. Try again. Not sure what's happening there. We should also take the rotation off this. Looks like one of these edges is not flat either, so you can go into shading, x-ray, grab these edges here, straighten them, straighten them. So I'm straightening them using the scale tool. Insert, try snapping again. Yeah, it doesn't quite like that one. I think that one's broke. <laughs> Unless there's something I'm doing wrong. But you get the idea with this, so you could just rotate these ones, you know, sort of move them into place here. So there'd be like one at this level. there'd be one at this level and so on so you could keep adding them and I guess these would sit sort of above you know they'd be a little bit smaller and these would sit above here so just like that I don't know and there'd be one here one here and press shift D to duplicate over and over again you know, so you get the idea that there'll be one there as well. Let's check that out and see what it looks like. There you go. So it is uh, it's looking pretty cool. I think you could play around with that more to get this to line up a little bit better, but you get the idea. So it's off to the block out is off to a good start. I'm just gonna delete those. It's really bugging me that they're not the same distance. So we can remove this. Damn, that's some serious OCD then. Okay. Take that rotation off. I don't like your rotation. Minus 90. Select this. Control 1. Top view. and insert the pivot point, snap it, snap it again, snap it again. <laughs> and this is a case where the reason if you try to snap now, it's, it's because it's always snapping the pivot point. So if I try to snap here, it's not working. So we need to actually move the pivot point to the edge of the object and then snap. And then you get something that looks right. Control one again. Side view. You can also go into vertice mode as well. That's kind of like a little bit easier. So snap. So holding down V to snap. Come on, don't be stubborn with me. Doesn't like that. No, somewhere around there, just to neaten it up a little bit. Back to X-ray, and we really could move this in. I don't know, just for the sake of matching this concept for now, as it's kind of bugging me that it's not lining up. You guys get the idea that you can have a mess around with this yourself to really get it into place. You know, sometimes I might spend hours just trying to get trying to get these things to work properly. So here we'd have one here, 
another one there, and so on. And they're looking a little bit too big, these ones, but you get the idea. So we shift the map right for you. And you move them sort of on top there. So that gives us that. Doesn't look so great at this angle here, but it looks better when we're working here. Back to x-ray, so that's lining up now, which is looking cool. I'm just gonna do a quick save and then we'll carry on and we'll do the, the building on the right. All right, we'll copy the main foreground building. Scale them down. We don't need all of these edges, so let's just delete them. So this building looks like it would be reasonably close to our main building and maybe kind of like about six meters away or maybe a little bit more away from the pillar wall. So there's a canal running through here. Let's put the rotation back to zero. We're just gonna move, move him to the side and we're going to say, you know, this is kind of, let's, let's take a guess. We'll say somewhere sort of around this point here. You know, because it kind of feels like you could jump from here onto this next building. So let's go that one backwards. It's building a bit bigger. And we also want to say that these buildings sort of are in line roughly they don't have to be but uh it's good to sort of figure that out so yeah i think that's fine so what we need to do is rotate this building now so let's add i'm just going to go back into the render cam just so we can line this up a little bit better So I'm just moving this sort of further away from the camera in Z there until it's lined up. So that's what I'm getting. Something around there. It's way too close. So we know we need to move this to the side. Like that. I think we'll yeah, we'll we'll do it this way. So we know we need to move this further away from that pillar wall. And if we do that, then we need to move it downwards, like so. But we don't want to go in too far, too far past this building. Let's add in an edge loop, so in here, and we're going to add it sort of around this level here where the this building trim is. Let's rotate the entire object now so we match the sort of line on this building with the line here. So those lines are parallel, which is, I think, somewhere around there. So we can just shift him around. Actually, he's more around there. Yeah, something around there. Shift him back a little bit. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. I think that looks all right. So moving further this way. Move that line, the edge down, make sure it's still lining up with the building trim. You can add another one in here as well. Make sure the other ones are lining up. So these columns here, move it up. Yeah, they're, they're in line. So that's looking pretty good. Yeah, I like that. And then the second building in the background. Let's move this to object. Undo. Control D. And we'll keep a sort of similar distance in between these buildings. So I say 
you know, this building should be sort of roughly that distance. And I think we'll keep these ones sort of in line. So I'm just going to move this back. So this line meets where the purple painted wall is. So around there, that tells us that the building needs to be a little bit longer here. Let's delete these edges. Shift right click delete. Make this building taller. Take it out of frame. Like so. This building would be a bit sort of chunkier maybe. So that's lining up quite nicely. We can add in some extra edges to check that our perspective lines are working. So we can add, you know, I'm adding just some where these windows would be. Yeah, that's looking cool. Let's add this extrusion here. So where this part is, the building's being extruded out. So we'll take it from this level, all right? Take these faces, shift right click extrude, and we'll just extrude that out to there. And that's pretty much it. It's nice and simple then. Let's check out what this looks like now in the scene. Okay, so that seems to be lining up quite nicely. Looks like we need to drop the bottom of this building past the floor level because you know there's sort of water and a canal running down here, so we can drop that all the way down. Do exactly the same for this building too. So we take all these vertices at the bottom, drop them right down. So they're sort of roughly at the same, I don't know, roughly at the same level doesn't really matter too much because we can't see it back into the main camera switching between x-ray so we can turn it on and off yeah and we seem to be getting things nicely lined up there which is looking cool we want to delete part of the floor where this uh, canal would be so I think we'll just rotate the floor sort of at this angle here. It's fine. It doesn't really matter too much about the rotation. And then at this point, I'll select all these edges, that, all the faces, just so we've got this. For rendering purposes, we could you know, extend this section out just here, just a little bit. Yeah, that's looking cool. Kind of liking that, you could neaten up this. So this one would also be sort of at the same level. Like that. And also adding sort of that 45 degree wooden beam in there as well to match the concept. Okay, so now what we wanna do is move on to adding the windows and the way we do this is by measuring one of the windows and then duplicating that window over and over again. So it's important that all of the windows on the building are roughly the same size. So the one thing I wouldn't do is I wouldn't start going in like this, trying to match these up like that. That's not how we want to do this. The way we want to do it is we measure one first. So let's line that up. So where the window would start around here and sort of around here. So that gives us the measurement for one window, which is just there, back in. Just gonna check out, see if that lines up. Yes, it does. So that gives us one window, that, that's our reference. So we can go to shift, right click and duplicate the face. We'll take these objects out of the group now and delete by type history to get rid of that group. So we've got our window. That's our window reference. Window sort of dimension ref or something. I don't know, something generic like that. Modify center the pivot. And now we've got our reference there. So we'll go back to the render cam, back to X-ray, and now I'm going to control duplicate this window here. We're going to move him upwards. 
so around sort of this level in there then we're going to take the both of these windows and duplicate them down remember remembering to ignore uh, the concept here so we move it sort of around I don't know around there shift D shift D so we've got eight windows that are all the same size this same rule should be applied for the buildings here so I'd copy this window uh, reference here and I would duplicate it and move it over to around here and add that on okay so from this point I would start moving these edges down so I'd move that down until this meets here just zooming in getting in there getting it nice and accurate like so making sure these ones line up nice I go in I'd add more edge loops so one around so one around here one around here one around here I'm just doing this faster so you can see it but I'd probably be zooming in I'd be being a little bit more accurate with this and uh, one here then what we do is turn off are, whoops, it doesn't like that, does it? That's really odd. Never had that that issue before. Okay, so I'm middle mouse clicking to drag that down, selecting all of them, and Control H to turn them off. Then we select all these windows in here. Shift, right click, and extrude the face. Then we're going to extrude this inwards like that. So on the local translate Z, we can just slide it by minus 30 centimeters. So sort of like an average sort of thickness of a wall. Once you've done this, delete all those faces. And now you've got your windows. A nice little trick to beveling this entire building is to select all of the edges here. I'd actually be sort of maintaining as well. Oops. So I'd be mean maintaining the topology here. So we've got sort of, maybe we could add another five edge loops around here to keep that nice and uniform, maybe four. Yeah, something around there. And at this point, I would. Go to edge, select all of the edges, and shift right click and bevel the edge. And very importantly, I would turn off this chamfering, turn that off. And then I'm gonna control left click and slide on this fraction, just to get that smaller. Increase the segments to around three. That gives us that result. And then when we hit smooth, we get this result here. And just be careful of making your buildings look too soft, sort of around the edges. You don't want them to look too sharp to the point where they look like this. And you don't want to make them look too soft to the point where it looks like um, Play-Doh or something. So you could do something like that and now they look too soft. So just bear that in mind. You could probably turn this down to about 0 0.05 maybe or 0 0.08. I don't know, just to soften them a little bit, which helps the model look more real. And I more or less just apply that same technique to all the windows. So that's one way to do it. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty cool. And I keep the buildings nice and straight as well so i did read an article uh, a few years ago by alex roman i think it was alex roman who did third and the seventh and he was sort of talking about how you sort of just warp the edges of the model to make it feel a little bit more real um, which is a really valid point but just be careful about doing this because uh, you'll start to make the work look really stylized if the buildings are like wobbly uh, it's not looking too good, so you sort of need to do it and be cautious whilst doing it to not do it too much. 
and most of the time I'll leave the buildings dead straight so all the lines will be nice and straight and I'll let the displacement map do sort of the warping of the edges uh, and yeah so I'll let the displacement map do most of that let's go back check it out one last time and you guys can carry on and just sort of uh, block the rest of the scene out and add in, start adding in the details now which is really cool uh, if you do get stuck then check out my main master scene and all the objects uh, will be in that scene <laughs>